Julio Gonzalez, a jilted lover whose arson revenge at the unlicensed Happy Land nightclub in the Bronx in 1990, claimed 87 lives, making him the nation's worst single mass murderer at the time, died at a hospital in Plattsburgh, New York, where he had been taken from prison. He was 61. Prison officials stated that the cause of death was a heart attack. He was serving 87 concurrent sentences of 25 years to life in prison, after being convicted of starting the fire, which swept through the club early on March 25, 1990. Mr. Gonzalez was being held at the Clinton Correctional Facility in Danamora, NY before his death. So, happy land. The club, at the time, was located on the second floor of a rundown building on Southern Boulevard in the East Tremont neighborhood. It was two or three blocks away from 800. On this particular day, the day of the fire, it was crowded, mostly with Honduran immigrants celebrating carnival. Only six people escaped. Happy Land was found to have lacked fire exits, alarms and sprinklers. It had been ordered closed in November 1988, and its operators were facing eviction. Mr. Gonzalez, fire starter, had just lost his job at a Queen's Lamp warehouse when he showed up at Happy Land. Feliciano, who worked as a co-checker at the club, said she had broken up with Mr. Gonzalez six weeks before the fire, and there had been no fights between them. But she said trouble unfolded in three short talks that the two had amid the din and crowds at the club in the early morning hours of March 25, 1990. The talks left her feeling ill at ease, she said. She said Mr. Gonzalez told her. You're going to see, tomorrow, you're not going to work here anymore. I told you and I swear it. Mr. Gonzalez arrived at the club about 2 a.m. Ms. Feliciano said she distinctly remembered his sarcastic and ironic smile. He then told her he loved her, but she retorted that she didn't need him. Mr. Gonzalez appeared unfazed, she said, and walked off and talked with friends at the downstairs bar for about a half hour, and then went upstairs for 15 minutes. It was when he came back downstairs that Ms. Feliciano became uncomfortable. She told the bouncer, Marvin Alicia, that she was having problems with him, but warned Mr. Alicia about Mr. Gonzalez's temper. By then Mr. Gonzalez was angry at Ms. Feliciano for bringing in a third party. He said, I know you have a boyfriend, it doesn't matter, you and I until death. After the altercation, Mr. Gonzalez walked three blocks to an Amico service station, where he found an empty one-gallon container and bought one dollar worth of gasoline from an attendant he knew there. He returned to the club. Upstairs, a disc jockey had just spun the reggae tune Young Lover by Coco T. Mr. Gonzalez splashed the gasoline at the bottom of a rickety staircase, the club's only means of exit, and ignited it. By the time firefighters arrived, the victim's screams had largely subsided. Bodies were piled in the stairwell and on the second floor. Most of the clubgoers had suffocated from the smoke or had been trampled trying to escape. Ms. Feliciano was among the six survivors. She recounted her argument with Mr. Gonzalez to the police, who went to his apartment, where he confessed. I got angry, the devil got to me, and I set the fire he told detectives. He pleaded not guilty but was declared sane and tried before Justice Roberts, who imposed the sentence on September 19, 1991. The Bronx courtroom was packed with relatives of the victims who had come to listen firsthand to Ms. Feliciano, who has angered them. What angered them was that Ms. Feliciano testified that she barely screamed a warning to the others inside before she escaped. Nor did she call the fire department, leaving the call to someone who was closer, she said. Ms. Feliciano said she was afraid that Mr. Gonzalez would attack her on the street, so she got into a taxicab and drove away. I'm angry, said Carlos Laguna, whose mother was the bartender on the first floor, and who, Ms. Feliciano said, stayed to alert the others. Minerva Laguna died in the fire. She didn't even notify anybody, Mr. Laguna said. She screamed fire. To herself. Maria Colon, whose husband died in the fire, could not restrain her scorn. She had time to call a taxi, but she didn't have time to call the fire department. Ms. Feliciano said, she saw a long flame, running fast and straight with the sound of dry leaves, and the club was engulfed in a nightmare of smoke, heat and fire. She said she screamed and then grabbed the hand of the owner's wife and escaped through a door. The 87 concurrent prison terms formed the maximum allowable sentence, which was described then as the longest ever handed down in New York. Some spectators in the Bronx courtroom also found the sentence insufficient. 
It wasn't enough. I wanted the death sentence, said Maria Cohen, who sat with her daughter Maria, 14, and her son Ramon, 11, clutching a bouquet of violets and roses for her husband, Ramon, who had died in the fire. I wanted him to be there with the 87 people who died. The happy land inferno left some 90 children as orphans. More than 40 parents lost sons or daughters. Five of the victims were students at nearby Theodore Roosevelt High School. Mr. Gonzalez would have been eligible to apply for a parole hearing in November. He became eligible for the first time in March 2015. During a video conference call interview at the time, he said he had not realized how many people were inside Happy Land that night, that he had nothing against them, and that his anger had been directed at the bouncer. He told me he was going to hit me, Mr. Gonzalez said. And I told him I was going to leave, but I was coming back. In rejecting his request for parole, the parole board concluded that he would not live at liberty without again violating the law, and that releasing him would be incompatible with the welfare of society. Jay-Z once referenced the Happy Land fire in his lyrics. He says. El Capitan, the fire I spit burned down Happy Land. Mr. Gonzalez was born in Holgan, a city in Oriente Province in Cuba, on October 10, 1954. He served three years in prison in the 1970s for deserting the Cuban army. In 1980, when he was 25, he joined what became known as the Mariel Boatlift, an effort organized by Cuban Americans and agreed to by the Cuban government that brought thousands of Cuban asylum seekers to the United States. It was later learned that many of the refugees had been released from jails and mental hospitals. Mr. Gonzalez was said to have faked a criminal record as a drug dealer to help him gain passage. Landing in Florida, he traveled to Wisconsin and Arkansas before arriving in New York, sponsored by the American Council for Nationalities in Manhattan, which linked newcomers with relatives. Corrections officials said they had no information on Mr. Gonzalez's survivors. This about wraps this story up. Stay low, thanks for watching. Dot.